Thank you. Inspired. Thank you. Enjoy your talk. Yeah. Thank you, Kaldeep. Hi, everyone. Oh, I guess it's the last talk, huh? How is everyone doing? Yes. More energy. More energy. How's everyone doing? Thank you. Thank you. Um, how many of you here are designers? Better raise of hands. Cool. How many of you are developers? Not so bad. Nice. All right. Um, so now I'm the only guy standing between you and Sunday dinner. So I'll keep this short and sweet. All right. Um, before I start, I would like to thank the organizers um, for giving me this op opportunity. And for all of you who sacrificed your precious Sunday night, afternoon to listen to me. All right, this is me. My name is Chin. Nice to meet you. I'm a UX designer. Um, I moved to Singapore three years ago from Thailand to work at Google. Um, but I haven't always been a designer. Um, I would like to share with all of you my journey from working as a, a software developer and how did I make the transition into UX design. And probably some of the important UX learning that I picked up along the way. This is me from nine years ago. I'm eating cake, and I do still now. You probably realize that I haven't changed that much. Um, so I started my career as a software developer. I developed web applications, mobile applications, websites, um, back-end web services, anything you can imagine. I strongly believe that coding is a truly amazing skill to have. You can create anything from just a set of commands and a computer, and boom, you got anything. But as I progressed through my career, I start to find out that there is some missing piece from this skill. One day, I got a chance to visit one of my clients. Um, so I made a web application for them just to help them with their, their daily work. Um, the client was struggling to use the software that I created. So the client asked, Hey, Jin, how do you save and submit this task? It was like one of the most simple things that they should know. Or I think they should know. Um, the client was frustrated, and they, he blamed himself for being not so tech savvy. This is when I realized that the tools that I created, instead of helping that person, it made him doubt himself. This is when I learned my first lesson about UX. User empathy. There is no way for him to understand what I'm thinking, how I'm designing the workflow, unless I actually tell him, or I have to design something that's intuitive. I needed to understand how he would interact with the software that I created in the, with the tools um, in order to create an interface that he can use. About a year after that, so I'm getting older and more well worse with design development. So I get to work on a bigger and more complicated project. So I was asking to build this data visualization for the healthcare data in Thailand. After three months of development, this is what we got. So showing the maps. Um, we got something that we think was quite great. And we are ready to hand it off to the client. In the handoff presentation, the executive comes in, and then he said, this is not what we want. I think some of you probably shared the experience, but we were like, oh. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> I didn't design what you want. Um, so this is when I learned about one more important thing, is to define the problem very clearly and very early in the process. Who are we building it for? What is the purpose we're trying to solve, achieve? And what problem are we solving? 
I can see that that's a gap between me and the stakeholders. I didn't know at the time how to solve this problem. I know that I know nothing about healthcare, but I'm quite good with my technology skill. And I know that this executive is work in the field for decades, like 20 years, 30 years. He knows everything about healthcare, but he doesn't really understand what technology can do for him. Oh. So this is when I realized that I needed some skill. So I started to look out in, other, in the design discipline to find the answer. So I started very small. I feel like I shouldn't take risks and then throw like my three years or four, seven years of hard work on software development. So I started very small by doing a graphic design class. It was just 10 classes. I learned about grid system, color theory, layouts, typography, whatever it, it takes to make a good design good. Instead of finding that answer to fill the gap, I, it teaches me that actually design and creativity is trainable. I'm, I will tell you that right now, like, if you see me nine years ago, I'm not, I cannot draw, I can't do anything, I can just code. Um, but design is like any other skills. If you keep practicing, you'll get better at it. Sometime later, um, as the design class didn't solve my problem, I ran into this TED talk. This is probably one of the most inspiring TED talk, talk that you, you guys probably seen before. It was a TED talk by Tim Brown. So he's one of the person who popularized the word design thinking. He talked about, with this design thinking, we can solve the fuzzy problem or the problem that we are, are not clear about. We can work collaboratively with a multidiscipline people so we can utilize all the expertise from different fields. And he challenged us to think big and solve the problem that no one had imagined before. At that time, I immediately knew that this is the missing piece that I was looking for. So I decided to take a leap of faith um, and go and get a design degree. So. So, excuse me. I joined Indiana University in America. Um, I enrolled into two different programs that teach about design thinking. There was a school of computing, and there was a school of design. In a school of, in a school of computing, they teach a very well-defined process. It's a six-step process that specifically designed for you to design software. This is a very, very easy to understand and easy to grasp process. On the other hand, in the design school, they talk about the foundation thinking, how the design thinking comes to be. What are the founding fathers of design thinking? This helped me to understand that once you become very experienced about design process, you can break the rules and mix and match whatever works for you. And finally, I learned how to do a design process. After doing a lot of projects, a lot of practical work with a lot of different people. Two years went by very quickly, and it's time for me to go back to Thailand to solve the problem with my new acquired skill. I rejoined the same company that I was working for, um, and it was very nice of them to accept me. Um, so I looked through all their main products, find all the recommendations, and then give them suggestion that these are the things that you can do to improve your user experience. My boss was very happy. He's like, oh, Shin, thank you. But, why are these important? <laughs> and I, I felt, 
wow, my two years was like gone. <laughs> but he's asking a very legit question. So I spent some time to think about it. All the changes that I made, all the recommendations that I made will cost him. Any engineering work to fix anything costs money. So as a business person, he's thinking, what are the benefits of these changes? This is when I learned how to communicate the UX value. So I went back, look at the company analytics and say, yeah, from these five pages, you got 50% drop off point. These are 50% of people who visit your website that could actually be potential users. He bought it, he made all the changes. These are the five key skills that I think user de UX design needs. And these are the things that I picked up along the way. Not long after, something unexpected happened. So I received a phone call from a long la lost friend from a university who was working at Google at the time. He said, hey, Jin, do you want to work for Google? And the rest is history. <laughs> of course, I say yes. <laughs> um, so I moved to Singapore, and now I'm working at Google. I first joined as a product specialist and slowly transitioned into the UX field. And now I am in a UX team. I wanted to end this talk with two of my most important learnings and one message. So, as a UX designer, we are the voice of the user. If we don't represent the user, no one else will. In this competitive field of work, product managers is rushing, trying to understand what it takes for a product to launch. Engineers making sure the product is built and is stable. UX designer make sure that the products we create fit the user needs and is easy to use. Product building is a marathon. It's not a sprint. We are here for a long run. Focus on keeping the balance of your life. Be happy and create good product. For myself, this is the way that I find my best work. This is the way that, wait, sorry. Because for myself, I know this, I'm only at best when I'm happy. Lastly, I would like to leave you with a message from our CEO, Sundar Pichai. He said this in his year-end email. What I love about Google is that we're always looking ahead to improve things. This is what makes Google different. And I feel very fortunate to be part of the team. In the future, I want to be involved in building more innovative products, solving bigger and bigger problems, and improve lives in ways that I haven't imagined. And we can all be part of it. Thank you. Yes. Hi, I think it's super cool that you made the transition from coding to designing. So what do, you, do, what do you think the biggest advantage is to you as a UX designer of having coded before? Hmm. I do, think do you see it as an advantage? Yes, definitely. Um, I think I understand engineers. Um, and at the same time, when we are designing certain things, I can actually see what are the limitations or what could be difficult. Or when an engineer comes and say like, hey, Chen, this is not easy. Like changing this color is not easy. You might think it is, but it's not. So I'm like, okay, 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 okay. Let's, let's, let's deprioritize this. Yes. So I find that when, when working with engineers, it's become more easier, easier because I understand it more. 
And at the same time, that way they can relate more to what I'm saying. I'm saying like, hey, this is really bad. This is going to affect the user. They're going to leave. Um, and then that's like, it's easier to build trust. Any other question? Are you ready for dinner? Yes. Uh, hi. So um, probably you're aware that there's very often a, a communication gap between designers and uh, uh, coders. So what would be your recommendations? How the designers can communicate uh, their ideas better? and maybe how they can understand the reasons from that are coming from the uh, coders better, like how to bridge that gap. So you're asking, how do, we, do I solve that problem, bridging the gap between me and the stakeholders? Uh, I see, okay. So understand, make, communicate, so make sure that engineers understand why you want to make certain changes. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, so, this is what people told me. You have to UX them. <laughs> okay, um, so the way that they say it is like, you have to UX the toot out of them. <laughs> um, so, engineer, engineers understand things in a certain way, right? Like when they, you say something, they understand, okay, this is going to take me three days. Why? Um, and then you, you basically have to answer like, okay, user takes three hours to do this, and we have one million users, and it's three million hours, so I think you're three hours worth it. Or you're three days worth it. And then it's going to be, oh, okay. Um, or you can, can just invite them into a usability session. They can see how frustrated it is. Then they're like, oh. There's always like a, oh, okay, I should fix this. Let me fix it now. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Thank you. Hey, Chin. I'm Hello. Nathan. So I wonder, uh, will you recommend designers to learn how to code? That's my first question. <laughs> my second, well, if you want to answer. Oh, would you recommend designer to code? Yeah. Tough question. So my professor said, never code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what, what's your take on it? I mean. Um, I think it depends on the organization. It depends on the team dynamics. I feel that having the skill to code is like learning a language. You, when you learn to code, you learn the culture of the engineers too. So that in turn kind of make things smoother and easier for you to get, to, get along, building product together. Um, but in, in a team that doesn't have a lot of designer, then designer should be focused. That's because I, have, I feel like this is the way that we can best contribute. There might be 10 engineers and just one designer. No, I got it, I got it. I'm not saying switch roles, just learn how to... Oh, if you're interested, then you should, yeah. definitely. And my second question has to do with your transition, because I did the same from design to engineering and back. Oh, nice. So I wanna Round know, full circle. I'm just curious, I'm just curious to, to know if like, you ever thought about maybe I can come back someday? Mm, difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> will, will my boss know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, maybe I say no for now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. Um, if you guys have some time, and you c if you can write post it, just the comments um, on what I did well, what I did bad, what I think you think I can improve, and then just paste it somewhere. Where is, where is a good place? Yeah, anyway. so, place, it, place it there. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is my first talk to like a lot of people, so I would love to hear your feedback. Oh, the feedback for me. So yeah. there's this QR code. You can always put the feedback. The feedback is all about the whole event, but you have to focus on it. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay. That. There is one open type question, so you can use that to feedback about you. Okay. Yes. So that. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Please have a good holiday. Thank you.